questions 11 through 20 on the 2021 grade 10 Kaylee math contest. In the diagram, which of the following points is at a different distance from P than the rest of the points? Well, here's P, and then every one, it seems like to me, it's three in one direction and one in another direction, and I'll explain. So A is three across, one up, and then B is one across, three up, and then E would be one down, three across, and C would be one across, three up. So all of those would pretty much have the same uh, distance, but D is two across, two up, so that's definitely going to be different. And therefore, number 11, the answer is D. X is 2, Y is X squared minus 5, Z is Y squared minus 5, Z equals. Y is equal to X squared minus 5. Y, therefore, would be 2 squared minus 5, and therefore that is 4 minus 5, which is a negative 1. Z is Y squared minus 5, Z would be negative 1 squared minus 5, Z is 1 minus 5, and that is negative 4. Number 12, the answer is E. In the diagram, PQR is a straight line. X plus Y is 76. What is the value of X? All of these angles add up to 180 because they are angles about a line, straight line. So that looks like 3X plus 2Y, and that is 180. And then the question actually gives you that x plus y is equal to 76. So I can just use that piece of information to isolate for y and then sub that back into here. So it'll be 3x plus 2 times y, which is 76 minus x is equal to 180. So that means 3x plus 152 minus 2x is equal to 180. x is equal to 180 minus 152. X is therefore equal to 28. Number 13, the answer is A. The line with the equation Y is equal to 2X minus 6 is reflected in the Y axis. What is the X intercept of the resulting line? Let us make a diagram, and then I think from the diagram alone we'll be able to figure this out. So here is the coordinate axes and let's draw those lines now but I think we'll have to plot it first but it shouldn't be that hard with that equation when x is 0 y would be negative 6 so let's say that's negative 6 and when x is 3 uh, y will be 0 so approximately here so let's connect those two lines and when you do it'll look like this sort of now, if you are reflecting that line in the y-axis, then that pretty much means it would be exactly like that, but on the other side. So that would be the reflection, basically. And because of the symmetry of this, this would be negative 3. And that's pretty much what they're asking. What is the x-intercept of the resulting line? The x-intercept will be negative 3 of the resulting line. So number 14, the answer is D. Amy bought and then sold 15N avocados for some positive integer N. She made a profit of $100. She paid $2 for every three avocados, sold every five avocados for four bucks. What is the value of N? Okay, well, her profit is basically how much she made in her sales minus her expenses. And then her sales, it looks to me, that would be 15n divided by 5 and then multiply that by 4. Her expenses, you take the 15n, total number of avocados, divided by 3 this time and then multiply that by 2. And that profit is $100. So this looks like 3n times 4, which is 12n, and then that is 5n times 2, so 10n. And that's 100. So that is 2n is 100, and therefore n is equal to 50. So number 15, the answer is C. If 3 to the power of x is equal to 5, then the value of 3 to the power of x plus 2 is. 3 to the power of x plus 2 is the same as 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 2. 
Well, 3 to the power of x, they told me, is 5. And then 3 to the power of 2 is 9. So 5 times 9 is 45. And there you go, number 16. The answer is E. A group of friends are sharing a bag of candy. On the first day, they eat a half of the candies in the bag. On the second day, they eat two-thirds of the remaining candies. On the third day, they eat three-fourths of the remaining. Fourth day, four-fifths of the remaining. Fifth day, five-sixths of the remaining. At the end of the fifth day, there is only one candy left in the bag. How many candies are in the bag before the first day? Let's say that number is X. Then after day one, what happens? Well, you eat half the candies, so the only thing that's remaining is the other half. That's what is remaining. And then after day two, they've eaten two-thirds of the remaining, so what's left is one-third. So one-third of this above amount is left, remaining. And then day three, they eat three-fourths of what's remaining, so what is after they finish eating, what's remaining is a quarter of the previous total. And then similarly in day four, they eat four-fifths of the remaining candy, so what is left over is a fifth of the previous amount. And then finally, in day five, they eat five-sixths, so what is left over is a sixth of the previous amount, so one-sixth times one-fifth times one-fourth times one-three, one over two, x. And then now, after day five, there is only one candy left. So this is basically the equation we have to solve. That, to me, just looks like x over six times five times four times three times two is 720 is equal to one. Cross multiply, and x is 720. And there you go. So number 17, the answer is b. Alina and Gustavo leave Cayley High School at 3 p.m. Alina runs north at a constant speed of 12. Gustavo walks east at a constant speed of 5. After 12 minutes, Alina and Gustavo change direction and travel directly towards each other, still at 12 and 5, respectively. The time that they will meet again is closest to. Well, let's see here. She is going up, and he is going across, something like that, right? And then eventually... They start traveling toward each other. So north and then east, so that's going to draw a right angle. So first, Alina is going up like this. And as always, speed is equal to distance over time. So her distance would be speed times time. Her speed is 12 kilometers per hour. Her time is 12 minutes. So we have to convert 12 minutes to an hour, so it would be 12 over 60. 12 minutes to hours, basically. So that, when you do that math, is uh, equal to 2.4. And then in a very similar way, so this is 2.4 in terms of d uh, distance. We can find the distance for the other person is Gustavo, who's going east. That's also speed times time. His speed is 5, and then the amount of time is the same, 12 minutes, which would be 12 over 60 in terms of hours. When you do this calculation, you get exactly 1. Okay, that's really nice. So now I have to start uh, working with that region because that's when they start traveling towards each other, and they'll probably meet somewhere here since Alina is traveling a bit faster. So from here to here... That is going to be a certain distance, and then from here to here. But I have to get the total distance, and I can do that with Pythagoras. Let's just say the total distance is h for hypotenuse. That's going to be 1 squared plus 2.4 squared. So h will be equal to 2.6 when you do that math. So this whole thing is 2.6, right? So if this is x, the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here will be x uh, 2.6 minus x, like that. Okay, I think that is sufficient. We should be able to figure this out now. So let's give ourselves some space, and off we go. So now they meet at the time is 
the same. When they meet, the time is the same. So the time for Alina would be the same amount of time as for Gustavo at this point. So the time using that formula would be D over S, right? D over S. So this D over S would be uh, 2.6 minus X over 12. And this D over X is just X over 5. Cross multiply and you get 12X is equal to 13 minus 5X. And therefore 13 is equal to 17X. And therefore X is equal to 13 over 17. So now we've got to figure out the time. Well, the time, we can just easily use one of those. So the time is x over 5, which would be basically 13 over 17 over 5. And that, in terms of a decimal, and it's a little bit easier if you put it to decimals, is 0 0.15 approximately, 1.3. But time is represented in hours, right? So we have to figure out, this is in hours, let's figure it out in minutes. Multiply by 60, and when you do multiply that number by 60, times 60, you get about 9 minutes, 9.2 minutes. Okay, so the time that they will meet again, well, they first travel for 12 minutes, and then they travel for another 9 minutes, so that's 21 minutes approximately from 3 p.m., so it would be 321. And therefore, number 18, the answer is E. In the diagram, eight circles, each of radius one, are drawn inside a rectangle. Four of the circles are tangent to two sides of the rectangle and to two other circles. Four of the circles are tangent to one side of the rectangle and to three other circles. A region has been shaded as shown. It consists of three spaces as well as four of the circles themselves. The area of this region is closest to. The four circles, that's easy. It's four times pi r squared. 4 pi, or the radius is 1, so that's just 4 pi. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now we have to figure out these regions. And those regions, I will call one of those regions A, and obviously there's three of them. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to concentrate really just on a square that is drawn from the centers of those circles, like that. And that should allow me to figure out A. A basically would be equal to the area of that square minus those quarter circles. So A would basically be the area of the square. And that's 1, right? So that's 1. So the area of that square would be 2 by 2. And then subtract from that 4 quarter circles, which basically would be 1 full circle. So pi r squared. And then that's 4 minus pi r is 1, right? Radius is 1. So that's just 4 minus pi. And then remember, we want 3a. So that total area of the shaded region would be this 4 pi that I just did plus 3a. So that's 4 pi plus 3 times a, which is 4 minus pi, which I got over here. So that looks like 4 pi plus 12 minus 3 pi. And that is just pi plus 12. Pi is approximately 3.14. So that is 15.14. And therefore, it's closest to 15. Number 19 would be D. How many four-digit positive integers are divisible by both 12 and 20 but are not divisible by 16? If a number is divisible by both 12 and 20, it would be divisible by its LCM, least uh, common multiple. So first we have to figure out what is the LCM of 12 and 20. Well, the best way is to first break them up into their prime factors. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, and 20 is uh, 2 times 2 times 5. And then with LCM, always think max. GCD, you think min, but I'm not going to get into that. So you have to take the maximum for each prime number. So for 2, it appears maximum uh, twice here, maximum twice here. So I've got to, that's why you've got to put a 2 there. For 3, it only appears once. That's the maximum. For 5, it appears once. So this is the LCM, and that is 60. So any number that is uh, basically 
a multiple of 60 will be sufficient. And that range, all four digit positive integers, so all the way from 1000 to 9999, and that is 9000 numbers. So 9000 divided by 60, that is how many numbers will be divisible by 60. Um, so that is what? 150, right? Okay. Well, 150 is one of the answers, but definitely don't circle that because the numbers also have a, another condition that they are not divisible by 16. So we have to subtract from this 150 all the numbers that are divisible by 16 and divisible by 12 and 20 because those are the only numbers we're looking at. First, we're looking at these numbers. Then we're looking at that number. So uh, this is an LCD situation once again, but this time we have to find the LCD of 12, 20, and 16. And these are the bad guys. These are the ones that we have to subtract from this 150. Okay, so same story. First, break it up into its prime factor. So 2 times 2 times 3, 2 times 2 times 5, and then 16 is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so LCD, I think max, remember? So 2, the maximum times it appears is 4 times, and that for, therefore that would be part of the LCM. Least common divisor, least common multiple, same thing, right? Let's call it LCM. Let's just be consistent here. Okay, so 3 is the next uh, prime number. Maximum it appears as once, and then 5 also the maximum it appears as once. So that's the LCM of these three numbers. So that looks to me like um, 16 times 15. Or sorry, yeah, yeah, 16 times 15. And that would be 240. So basically what that means is that any numbers that are divisible by 240, we have to eliminate. So again, same story. You take the 9,000 numbers, you divide by 240, and that would give you how many numbers are divisible by 240 in that range, and that's 37, the integer value. You only want to look at the integer value. Okay, so that means I've got to take this and subtract from it those guys. So 150 minus 37, and when you do, you get 113. Number 20, the answer is B.